Hello, hello, welcome back to my April review. Um, I begun doing this in March 2023 because it's so easy to show people the kind of shiny after and actually we know that the after only comes through the process, from doing the things. And so every month I just wanted to openly share some of the things, the tools and the things that I've been playing around with that have really made a difference. And I said at the beginning of this year, I really wanted to knock my own socks off. I wanted to make some big, juicy changes and to feel really great. And I've always been a very confident goal setter. I've created vision boards. I love doing that at the beginning of a year. But I also wanted to have some fantastic results as well. And I'm old enough and wise enough to know that they just don't come by accident. And I really don't buy in to the the lack of responsibility, I guess, that we might have, that we just hope that, I don't know, we'll win the lottery or a prince will come galloping over the hill on a horse and save us. I don't really believe in that. I feel like it's much better for you and a better use of your time to actually do the thing and to work and to uh, make some moves. And when I say work, it doesn't have to be all stretchy and unbearable. Um, You can enjoy the process. So yeah, here we go. Number one, a phrase that I have been saying so much to myself, and I've been saying it to clients for years, which is, tell me more. Tell me more. There's a song in there somewhere. I'm not going to sing it. The reason that this is so powerful is that it encourages you and your client, if you're in that situation, to really get to know what's really going on underneath the surface. And sometimes there's a fear in delving deeper because sometimes we go, but I don't know what I'm going to find and oh my goodness and what happens and all of this. I know myself, I'm much better when I can see something or when I know what the situation is. I don't really like surprises. I don't like things um, being a big shock or anything like that. And so I would much prefer to, I guess, have that pain in the moment where I go, oh, okay, right. Oh, this is what it is. Oh, there's much more work to be done than I thought there was going to be but at least I know where I'm standing in this situation. This tell me more phrase and phase has been very powerful at exploring and extracting what is actually underneath. So this might be if I felt really low one day, for example, if I've just not been having a great day, if my, um, I don't know if I was just feeling really negative or um, self-sabotage. You know those days where you're like, I can't do it. Nothing's happening. Nothing's working. Da, 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 da. And this question cuts through all of that. So asking myself in that situation, tell me more. Well, I just feel like this. Or I feel like this because, well, I didn't sleep very well last night. And as soon as I trace it back to that, I'm like, oh, you didn't sleep very well last night. Okay, so you're going to have to be a lot more patient with all of this. Then what you can do is as you keep asking the question, you get to know what's really important to you. So you might say, tell me more about that. And then you may get to a stage of saying, well, actually, I was just really disappointed that that didn't go my way. Or I saw something online that really frustrated me because I wasn't doing that thing. Okay, tell me more. What can then happen is you get clues as to what's important to you, what matters to you, maybe what you desire, what you really want to happen. And sometimes, again, we are reticent to 
say more because maybe we then reveal um, unfavorable or undesirable qualities about ourselves. So maybe a bit of jealousy, maybe anger that for most of us, we were taught like, no, 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 don't, don't say how you really feel. That's why doing it with yourself in a non-judgmental way of saying, tell me more, it means you can admit to myself, well, maybe I am a bit jealous about that. I mean, like that that's the fifth holiday that that person's had this year. And that's just not making me feel really great. And it's really remembering how much I like holidays. Mm, okay, do you see? So tell me more has been great for me. Uh, number two, um, habits. So I am on about day 452 of doing Spanish and class 164, just because I've just written it down, of doing hot yoga since a year last April. And I've also been exploring a journaling practice. I've been doing a lot of studying at the moment, really honing my practice and really learning about various things. Um, I'm also reading a lot more, so that's something that I'm tracking. And I have noticed that in the pursuit of creating a habit, sometimes I will put my own limitations on things. So I might have that moment of saying, right, Monday to Friday, I've done this. Like, wow, well done me. I kept up that habit. And then on Saturday and Sunday, it's almost like, I don't know, I might let myself off the hook and then like not do anything. And not just not do anything in support of it, but actively mess something up. So you might have it like, um, I don't know, you might not eat sugar very much between Monday to Friday. And then on a Saturday, you might go, right, I'm just going to buy a whole cake and eat all the cake. Again, no judgment here. But one of the things that was coming up for me was these limitations that I was putting in, in place. So when it came to renewing my yoga contract at the end of year one, I was, and I guess this is part of the way that I spend and the way that I um, allocate money, I really evaluated, okay, I've done a year of this hot yoga. Do I, do I stop there? Do I sort of say to myself, like, I'm done now? And this is really interesting because I didn't know why I was saying that. Because the truth is, I love the yoga. It makes me feel great. I'm finally progressing. Hallelujah. It's only taken 13 months, but, you know, I am getting closer to that. And why am I putting an on-off switch to my dreams, my habits, my desires, etc.? Why am I assuming that I've done enough? Why am I not letting myself off the hook, but saying, no, 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 stop now, stop, that's fine. Put, put on the brakes, go back to where we were. Hmm, interesting. So I want you to think about the habits that you are involved in at the moment. And maybe the way that you need to start with a habit, and I would highly recommend this, is to almost track it for a short amount of time. So say, I'm gonna do this every Monday for the next 12 weeks, or I'm going to do this for the next 14 days, or whatever it is, or 30 days, nothing too radical, but something that has some skin in the game. And then notice how it makes you feel. And if this is something that you wanna have for life, and this was an exercise that really helped me in this process actually, I went into the details of, do I want to be flexible and strong and in my body all throughout my life? The answer, of course, was yes. So keep up the yoga. And yet I had to be discerning about how I could do this in a way that was in support. So I think when people say you've got to do something as a daily habit or not at all, Sometimes the pressure is too much because then when we miss a day, we might think, well, now 
I don't know, now I, now I failed. Now I'm back to the beginning. Now I'm back at day one. And the truth is, is if we are on the lifelong mission, we have to make it work for ourselves. And that might be tweaking what the goal is. And so now I don't have, now I've built that habit back up. I don't have that on off switch where I'm like, yeah, some some months I exercise, some months I don't. And then I have six months off and then I might try it for 30 days again. I am aiming to consistently do something. And when I say consistently, I don't mean daily because I, sometimes my life just is not in the position to facilitate that. You might say it's a limiting belief, but sometimes logistically that is just not the case. And so I have to look at how I can measure this in the fact that I'm doing it. So there are some weeks that I might get to five classes in a week, which would be a pretty exceptional and probably rare week for me going to five yoga classes in a week. But I aim for about three. If I can get to three, it feels really good. But what has helped me, and then there's some weeks where I I don't go at all, you know, if we're away or if we get ill or when we have COVID or anything like that. What I now look at is how many times I've been overall. And when I see that number going up and up and up, that for me is a great measure of success because it's like, yes, I am doing it. This is happening. Let's go all of that good stuff. So if you can see there about making it work, and once again, I know people will say very stringently these like rules and regulations of these things that you have to do it in order to be a certain way. It's your life. It's your measure of success. You can do this however the heck you like, but just have a plan for it. Number three, notice all of it. Notice, notice, notice. If you can notice with a smile, it's going to help you so much more. And bringing that lightness to the great stuff that you do, but also the moments where you think, oof, that didn't quite go how I wanted to. Or sometimes I'm like that in parenting where I don't know, I mess up, uh, I mean, I mess up all the time, of course, I'm a human being, but sometimes when, I don't know, I have an expectation that something will go a certain way, and I've forgotten in that process to explain what's happening, or go through a process, and I would then go and kick myself and go, oh, you should have said that before, or you should have not packed so much in the day. You knew that that was going to end in tears. Like that was a really silly move to make, whatever it might be. And in days gone by, when I was noticing it all, I would have let it, allowed it to turn around my head all night long, like, oh, coulda, woulda, shoulda. And now what I do whenever I can is to notice it with a smile and give myself some compassion and go, whew, yeah, there was a lot of crying at the end of the day, but whoa, you handled it again. You did it. Everybody's fast asleep and we got there in the end and everybody's calm now and tomorrow is a new day. And already that lightness lightens the load. It lightens how I move forward. And that allows me to be flexible in the way that I'm operating in my life and business. Because if we're committed to the process, if we're doing it, things are going to pop up to say hello. We are going to be challenged. We are going to be in a situation where you go, uh, I wasn't prepared for that. Or that was a big mistake and that can't happen again. But instead of saying that was a big mistake, that can't happen again, um, Sometimes we have to say that was a really big mistake and yeah, that that was not great. However, you handled it quickly, you handled it professionally, you did what you needed to do and it has been rectified. So, compassion and noticing, yeah, being part of the process. Number four, Gabby Bernstein's phrase, which I love. 
she's written so many powerful books but this phrase is something like I just pick off a shelf or like pick out a bit of blossom from the sky and I use it all the time which is choose again choose again choose again and again I say it with that lightness choose again choose again We can all, as human beings, get stuck in ruts or get stuck in patterns. It's the the age old thing of waking up in the morning, stubbing your toe and going, ow, that hurt, oh no, right, oh, there's no hot water, we've run out of milk, blah, 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 all of these things. And this phrase pops in to say, choose again. And I often say it with a lightness of, go on, I dare you, go on, go on, Nikki choose again. As soon as I do that, as soon as I stop that, you know, you know how you feel and choose again, it lifts. I start to feel lighter. I become more expansive. I begin to look around. I begin to open myself up and I have been using it so much this month. And, um, yeah, it's been great. I love that phrase. Finally, uh, today, May the 1st, I celebrate 10 years of being a coach. And I can't believe it. It feels like yesterday, but equally it could have been 30 years ago. Because as I was sorting out all my cupboards over the weekend, I found my original folder and how I was operating and what I was doing. And I just thought, wow, you've come a long way. And it takes a lot for me to stop and recognize because I am busy and it's not usually my way where I'm like, wow, you're so great. And you did like, I just, I'm not that person. And I should be more maybe because I do that for my clients. I do that for my friends and family. Like I always want to be that cheerleader of saying, go on, you can do that. I want to be there when they get the job or um, do the thing. And 10 years has really made me recognize what a roller coaster this has been. But at the end of it, almost like one of those 90s game shows where you like have to fill a rucksack or you have to collect all the tokens. 10 years has given me a lot of time to collect a lot of different tokens and maybe drop a few along the way as well. And what I need to do today is to open that bag up and take the tokens out and go, oh yeah, I did that. Wow, I did that. Oh, oh, I've forgotten about that. Or whew that changed everything. And just spend that time with it. And I invite you to do that. And you don't have to do something for 10 years. Maybe it's the last month. Maybe it's you reflecting, going, wow, really turned a corner there. That was all, that was a different kind of client that I work with. That felt really good. Or I feel like I'm making progress with X, Y, and Z. Or Again, looking at something as to maybe you've written it on your goal list again for this month. Like, oh, I'm going to do this this month. And it hasn't happened just yet. Invite yourself to consider what tokens you need in order to make those moves. Because it's all there for you, ready. Um, That's it for me for this month. Thank you so much for joining and being part of this and watching and learning and... I hope there's been some value that you can take away today and have a play around with and um, and sit with, take on a walk, take to your journal, all of that good stuff. I'll be back next month with something similar. Um, obviously, different resolutions, different thoughts. Um, do subscribe to the channel. Do follow me across social media. Do go to my work with me page if you want to find out more, nikkiraby.com forward slash work with me. And also go to my freebies house. You can pick um, as many rooms as you like to explore, to go in, to see what you fancy. Um, All is self-explained on the freebies house, which is nikkiraby.com forward slash freebies house. I will see you very soon. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening and have a great day.